how does arrogance ruin my relationship? Well, again, I feel we need to first look at the purpose of arrogance. Well, why does a person want to be arrogant? Mm. Well, I think it's pretty clear why they want to be arrogant <laughs> in most cases. But, <laughs> but I think a lot of people don't give that much thought, uh, unfortunately, as to why they want to choose to be arrogant. What, what's their justification, their internal motivations yeah. for being arrogant in comparison to being humble? Mm. And, and if they knew that, then they probably wouldn't do it as much just by having that awareness of their own arrogance or the, the reasons why they choose arrogance. Mm. Uh, arrogance has many underlying motivations, which we'll yeah. probably want to list a few of yeah. them now. So what if you list them and I'll discuss them? Sure. <laughs> so the first thing is if I'm the arrogant party in the relationship, mm -hmm. I generally want to control or manipulate you as my partner. Correct. So, so arrogance has the effect of controlling and manipulating our partner. Now, why would we want to control and manipulate our partner? If we loved them, we probably wouldn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. So there must be some unloving reason why we wish to control and manipulate them. And a lot of the times it's because we want them to do what we want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're basically just being selfish in the relationship. And there's a whole heap of things we demand and expect our partner to do. And the way that we get our partner to do them is by just being arrogant with our partner and bossing them around all the time. <laughs> <laughs> bossing them around and forcing them into an acceptance of our opinion about matters. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So we just argue and argue and argue and argue until they, they admit we're right. One, one, one joke going around with men is, you know, if you have an argument with your, right, with your wife, the best way to, you know, stop the argument is just to admit she's right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is sad, isn't it? Which is very sad. Yeah. What if she's wrong? Yeah. From God's perspective, it matters whether she's right or wrong. Yeah. And, and you can't grow your relationship if she's wrong. Yeah. So you accepting something that's wrong, well, yeah, that's wrong yeah. <laughs> as well. <laughs> well, and that brings us probably to the second point, that if mm -hmm. in my partner relationship, you as my partner is arrogant towards me and I'm accepting that, mm -hmm. then that has some serious effects on our relationship as of, well, doesn't it? Of course, it? basically, I'm accepting manipulation and control. I'm accepting the desire of my partner to manipulate and control me. That means I have very, very little love of self. Mm -hmm. And if I've got very little love of self, how can I expect to have a growing relationship with my partner? Yeah. All that's happening is their love of self, and I wouldn't call it love of self, it's an abuse of self almost. Mm -hmm. Well, it is an abuse of self, but their so-called love of themselves, their arrogant opinion of themselves grows while my opinion of myself continues to degrade. And now, while one's growing and the other one's degrading, how, what's happening to the gap in between the two? Well, it's getting bigger, 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 bigger. That's what, you know, easily ruins a relationship. The bigger the gap, the more likelihood of the relationship being ruined. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked about the purpose of arrogance is a way to control one's partner. Mm -hmm. The secondary thing is probably... About I don't know if it's secondary, darling. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. The it's, second thing. Yeah, the second thing. <laughs> Not secondary. Primary reason, really. It's probably yeah. the primary thing. Yeah. Because when we want someone to share our opinion, we often want to do that in order to feel superior to Correct. that person. Correct. So what we're doing is we want power and superiority over the other person. Now, that's a pretty evil emotion, actually. It's pretty dark. And we see that occurring in many relationships where one party wants power or complete feeling of superiority over the other. And sometimes you see it happening on different issues with different parts of, you know, so the woman wants to feel that she's superior as a mother, mm -hmm. you know, the, the man wants to feel that he's superior as the worker, you know, and you, and you have them both accepting their superiority over the other in the different avenues of their life. And that's so-called good relationship. Well, I don't think it's a very good relationship. What it is, is one person being superior to the other um, you know, and feeling superior to the other in certain cases and areas. And that's unloving, mm -hmm. no matter how you look at it. At the end of the day, both of you have similar capacities. And while you may have various qualities it, it just, and that the other person doesn't have, it doesn't make you superior to them yeah. as a person. It doesn't make them inferior to you as a person. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you're worth less or worth more or valued less or valued more. And in fact, when we value something less or more or make it worth less or more, we're actually having an issue with regard to the superiority 
and inferiority and the, co the complexities that superiority and inferiority create in a relationship are quite large mm -hmm. and they cause huge gaps in the two halves ever coming together. It's a, it's a massive problem mm. and people who use, you mentioned arguing, but also uh, projections like condescension, dismissal of Bit their belittling. partner. Yep. And, and all of these things, they have a dual purpose. One is to make the person who's doing it to feel superior, but also the corresponding effect is that their partner feels very bad about themselves and that is the purpose of yes. that projection. And they want their partner to yep. feel bad about themselves, which is, which is very disturbing, actually. It is. It is. How, how can you say you love somebody when you want them to feel worse about themselves than they already feel? Yep. Like that, that's, not, that's not love. And that doesn't mean that you inaccurately say things about your partner in order to make them feel better. So if your partner comes up and says, do I have a fat bottom? And you say no, when they do, that's not going to help them either. That's right? denial. That's we denial. talked about that in the first We talked about that in the first question. <laughs> yeah. no, so, but arrogance wouldn't, wouldn't go, you know, you've got a fat bottom when the person's just size 10 or size 8 yeah, or something, yeah. you know, quite small yeah. uh, in terms of their size and you're trying to make them, manipulate them into doing something even further. Yeah. Right, to yeah. get their, what you, what you feel is the ideal they mm -hmm. should be, mm -hmm. to be there. Yeah. And, you know, that's manipulation, which is the, one of the primary reasons why we revert to arrogance. Yeah. Trying to manipulate our partner to do what we want, because mm -hmm. we think that it's important. So basically we've said that the purpose of, uh, of arrogance in a relationship is to manipulate and control a partner to get feelings of superiority and uh, have our partner feel inferior. inferior. And to have, to have power over our partner. And to have power. That's very important. So these are mm. the purposes of arrogance, arrogance within a relationship. Yes, and okay. arrogance avoids anger, which is interesting. Arrogance is driven by anger most of the time, but it avoids anger by going, I'm above the anger. Right, uh, you know, you're just a silly idiot. Uh, yeah. you, you're, so, you're so much of a silly idiot that I don't even have to get angry about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge tool, isn't it? Like yeah. you said, and this <clears throat> condescension is, is a very strong form of arrogance. And we see people employ that a lot with their partner. Well, they employ the it with their in general, general. world in general and with us most of the time. So of yeah. course they're going to employ it with their partner, yeah. but it's a terrible addiction to stay in a state of arrogance. It has a terrible effect on your relationship uh, for, for many reasons, which we'll go into. Yeah. Um, so that in that way, it's about avoiding truth. So we've mentioned control, manipulation, power, superiority, and avoidance of truth. Yes. This is all the reasons why there's arrogance in one or both of us in a relationship. Yes, and usually what we observe is that both parties have a degree of arrogance where they hold on to their own opinions quite strongly. They do not accept God's opinion about mm -hmm. any matter. Mm -hmm. And uh, they hold on to their own opinions quite strongly. The more they agree with each other, the better they feel their relationship is. And the less they agree, the worse they feel their relationship is. And when they don't agree at all, they break up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not understanding that actually a lot of disagreement comes from both of you being in the wrong condition and not actually accepting God's viewpoint on the matter. And this is a big problem with arrogance is that, it, is that it makes us completely blocked, not only to our partner's opinion and feelings, but completely blocked to God's opinion and feelings, mm. which if we're ever going to become at one with God is going to be a huge problem. But if we're ever going to become at one with our partner, it's also a huge problem. Yeah. Yeah, ironically, if, and, and as you would expect, I suppose, all of the issues that we have with our partner, we also have with God. Mm. So... So that's why working through your relationship issues can help you greatly with your relationship with God. Yeah, mm. yeah. So you've already mentioned really the effect that this has is very divisive on, mm. the, on the relationship. It pulls the, the two parties end up feeling more and more distant from each other. It also creates a lot of anger and resentment, huge amounts of anger and resentment in the long run. Yeah. And, and people have resorted in the past to violence in their relationship because of the anger and resentment created by arrogance. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a terrible underlying cause of, you know, the effect being the violence. Yeah. Of an, it's an underlying cause of violence in relationships. And often we see uh, partnerships where the male is quite arrogant towards a female 
And she ends up feeling worse and worse about herself, shutting down sexually, which is something that the partner often wants from... So he attacks her more. So he attacks her more, which makes her feel worse about herself, shuts herself down more. She feels more and more like she's a so lesser So he starts calling her being. frigid. Yeah, so he then <laughs> attacks her more. And in the end, there's just... There's no connection. Obviously, the... the the woman in that situation is not feeling how she feels as a result of the projection. No, if she did, she probably wouldn't, she wouldn't be there probably. Yeah, yeah. The same we see, don't we, with women with men, yeah. where the women think they're superior beings because they're mothers. Mm -hmm. They feel they're superior beings and they, they should have the say in the, final, in the household. They feel the men should look after their... Uh, their fear you know so the men's man's job is to to make their fear go away and so forth and so the women believe themselves to be superior beings and you know the men go off and almost do anything but as long as he treats her like he, she's a superior being then then everything's fine yeah. and we've noticed in some countries you know particularly when we're in brazil that the women are okay with their husbands going off and cheating on them even as long as they still believe the husbands <laughs> is this, still believe that the wife is the superior being yes yeah. um <laughs> that she's the only one with brains and practicality and, you know, capability. And as and long she's as she's a mother and she's got the right to say what goes on with her children and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the reality is we see this superior superiority demonstrated by both genders in relationships. Yeah. And sometimes even in the same relationship, both genders develop, develop a sense of superiority one over the other in different areas of the relationship. Yeah. But in every single area they do it, you're creating a break, a fission, a, a gap between you and the other half of you. Mm -hmm. And that, that is always going to end up in disaster. It's a bad habit that Indeed. causes major disaster, ruin, ruin to your relationship. Yeah. yeah. So if we just quickly, we've run through some of the secondary points about arrogance mm -hmm. um, and the effect it has on a relationship. We've covered a lot there. Yeah. But um, arrogance is obviously a lack of humility. Of course. Yeah. So in the last session that we had, we talked about the importance of humility in a relationship if you're ever going to grow a relationship, whether that relationship be between yourself and God or yourself and your partner. And in this case, arrogance is a, is a major break of, that, of the concept of humility and therefore and a major opposition to the concept of humility. So at the end of the day, you're not being humble. And if you're not being humble, you're never going to have a good relationship. Yeah. It's also a lack of desire for truth. Yes, because we're basically saying you know that I know all truth. When I'm arrogant, I'm believing I know all truth. What a stupid position. <laughs> God knows all truth and you know barely any at all. And to be honest, if you're in your first incarnation on earth, you pretty much know nothing. <laughs> and if you're in, even in your second incarnation on earth, which is only a few people in, there's still quite a lot you don't know. So, so, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to get away from, from the concept of you knowing anything. And as we talked to uh, one couple recently in one of our feedback sessions, you need to give up your own opinions of yourself and your own opinions of what is right and wrong and accept God's opinions of yourself and God's opinions of what is right and wrong. That is really the only way that you can give up arrogance. And that's a state of humility. So that's it. And accepting God's truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Arrogance involves a desire to feel and believe oneself to be superior, which we've, we've talked about that. Yes, it's a terrible thing though, isn't it? Yeah. When it's felt. Like yeah. if you allow yourself to feel that the other person believes themselves to be superior to you, it really feels like a very strong put down of yourself, doesn't it? They're yeah. not valuing you. Yeah. They don't honour you. They don't respect you. They believe themselves to be better than you. That there's so many negative emotions coming out of a person in regard to arrogance that, that and then that arrogant person believes that they should have a good relationship with you even and it's impossible mm -hmm. you can't have a good relationship with a person who believes themselves to be superior with you and and to you and and the real thing is why would anybody want to have a relationship with someone they believe is inferior to them anyway that's only because they want power. Yeah. It's got no, there's no other reason. Yeah. Like, why would you want a relationship with a person who's not your equal? Yeah. And I do hear a lot of um, older ladies who have been attracted to divine truth thus far who, who speak in very kind of condescending, dismissive terms about their long-term husbands. And this is, I don't know And how, men generally. And men generally. 
And, and we noticed it even at the group, at the assistance yes. group we did in Australia, when, the when there'd yeah. be one man and a group of women and all of those women being condescending to one man. Yeah. Like, and if I was that one man sitting there, I said, you're just a bunch of condescending <laughs> bitches, aren't you, really? <laughs> like, like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but, you know, because the man would put up with it because yeah. he thinks he has to because that's what he's put up with from his mother all of his life. He accepted it from them too. Yeah. Like, yeah, sad. It's very, very sad. difficult for a person to feel attracted to their partner if the the overwhelming message coming from that partner to to the person is that they're, they're inferior, that their will is not valid, that any all mm. the, they're not really valid is yeah. really the projection that arrogance gives. Yeah, yeah. And it's sad because it, it it hurts the person on the receiving end quite significantly if they yeah. have an emotional injury, and most of the time they do have the emotional injury to accept the hurt because otherwise they wouldn't be living with the person in the first place. Yeah. And it continues to hurt them in the same way that their own parents have hurt them. And uh, it's a really also unfortunately then becomes like more like a parent-child relationship than a relationship of equals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the last point, which I know both of us feel very strongly about, and we've talked about how arrogance is a desire for power. Mm. When the truth from God's perspective is that in any relationship, there's a power, in any loving relationship, there's a power vacuum. Yes. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because I know it's a favourite topic for us. Yeah, um, by power vacuum, what we're basically saying is that there's no party in a good relationship who desires to take power and control over the other party. And if, if and obviously that you, you could feel that that would be a, love, a, ter a tremendously good relationship with yeah. it when, when nobody's trying to manipulate you, no one's trying to control you, no one's trying to force you into doing what they want, no one's trying to take control of you, and you're not doing the same to them either. You're, you're in this loving space in that place. And, and this whole concept of a power vacuum, unfortunately, is very rare in relationships. And in fact, most relationships do have one person in power, mm -hmm. whether that be the husband or the wife, there is one person generally in power. Or we see this thing where people are in competition co continually with each other, trying trying to get power to get power, yes. and wanting they and they might have established it in one area, but then the other one wants it in another area, and and all of this kind of competing point scoring, feeling superior because I know about this. But those thing. relationships generally don't last as long no. unless there's a huge amount of emotional denial. Yeah. Um, because usually what happens in those relationships is over time they become so distressed, each party becomes so distressed about the constant fighting and arguments and the constant competition for power that they eventually give up and try yeah. and go and find a person who they can have power over. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's usually the result of those kind of relationships. I have though seen in religious circles in particular, relationships like that last the entire time on earth. And when you look at the sadness of that, like they might have been married in their 20s and they're 70 years of age, still engaged in this constant attacking, belittling process, you know, it, how, how hardened must you be at that point to any emotional sensitivity yeah. to, to stay in a relationship like that for 50 or 60 years. Yeah. But, but you see it a lot in religion, where mm -hmm. couples in religion feeling they have to stay together because they're now married and they treat each other so unlovingly and, and badly that by the time they arrive in the spirit world, both of them are in the hells of the spirit world and wondering why they're there. Mm -hmm. And it mostly is because they've just treated their partner so badly their entire life. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm. arrogance, something yes. to avoid. <laughs> so, yes, ruination. It brings a ruination <laughs> to your <laughs> partner relationship. Well, and it's, as you mentioned in our introduction, it's one of these very evil It emotions. is an evil emotion, um, often motivated by some pretty evil underlying desires. And unless we eradicate them, they're not, we're not judging them from those, we're just stating that evil is something that is that, that is completely in opposition to love. And while you have those kind of evil desires, it's highly unlikely you will ever have a loving relationship your entire life. Mm. And, uh, and if you do have what you consider to be a, a loving relationship, it's probably because you have almost total control and domination over the other. 
um, which God considers as a very, very bad relationship, actually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a terrible quality to develop. Obviously, again, developed in childhood, most of the time by parents who have taught their children that they are better than other people mm -hmm. or taught children that their family is better than other families or taught children that they are personally superior to others. And this uh, underlying childhood emotion is very, very difficult to eradicate and often has a terrible negative effect on relationships. Yeah. Mm. Okay.